Mohamed Mikati. I'm a pediatric neurologist and epilepsy specialist. Uh, I'm chief of child neurology at Duke University, professor of uh, pediatrics and uh, uh, professor of neurobiology at uh, that university. And uh, I've been involved with AHC uh, since the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, when I was uh, at Boston Children's uh, where I met a family with AHC and we reported that family as the first family showing that this is a genetic disease. And uh, uh, since then I've uh, continued to be interested in uh, AHC. I, uh, we did the uh, USA registry in the 90s and reported those uh, inf that data in 2000 and then uh, in 2008, uh, came to Duke where I collaborated with uh, uh, David Goldstein uh, and uh, we joined forces to study uh, AHC genetics and he organized uh, an international consortium uh, to study the genetics of uh, uh, AHC and uh, we were able to discover the gene at Duke in 2012. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, uh, I've been able to uh, organize a clinic uh, at Duke, multidisciplinary clinic that addresses the needs of uh, the patients uh, 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 and uh, to collaborate with uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, in uh, uh, Europe, in Australia, and in the US uh, to form the International uh, Alternating Hemiplegia of Childhood uh, Re Research Consortium. Uh, which uh, uh, work on with uh, uh, Alexei Arzimanoglu and uh, uh, Ros uh, Rosaria Vavasori from Italy. We uh, uh, um, uh, 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 organize uh, uh, with uh, other members of uh, the consortium uh, uh, activities, uh, scientific activities, uh, research uh, to try and understand the disease uh, more. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we are conducting also uh, studies at, at Duke, uh, uh, including uh, uh, the uh, development generation of uh, uh, two mouse models for AHC. Uh, 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 we uh, started uh, that uh, 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 two years ago. I got a grant uh, from Duke to, to generate the mouse. Uh, uh, the first mouse, and then uh, we got uh, uh, the second mouse also the same way. And uh, we've shown uh, that uh, uh, these mice uh, show the manifestations of the human disease uh, and uh, are very excited about that because uh, uh, um, uh, they not only they ma manifest the, uh, the symptoms uh, of hemiplegia, dystonia, seizures, behavioral abnormalities that patients have, but also we are able to study the physiology and we're finding some very exciting uh, uh, things. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we find that uh, the brains of these mice uh, have a phenomenon called spreading depression, which is known to be a manifestation of increased excitability and has been shown in uh, animal models of uh, hemiplegic migraine. These are patients who have uh, migraine that causes them to be hemiplegic, kind of very similar to what the alternating hemiplegia patients have. They, they have hemiplegia. Uh, previous studies have shown that spreading depression is the reason for the hemiplegia in uh, models of hemiplegic migraine. And what we have shown in our uh, model, uh, the mouse model of alternating hemiplegia, is that they too are predisposed to spreading depression. So we can show that in the lab, uh, in slices, uh, brain slices, uh, in these mice. And now we are screening for medications that we hope, uh, once we find medications that are hopefully effective, then uh, uh, we hope to translate that into uh, uh, clinical uh, studies. Uh, 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 the other thing that we have been able to achieve uh, uh, in the study of uh, uh, the, uh, our mouse uh, uh, model is uh, to show uh, that they have uh, abnormalities in neurotransmission. They, they, in the brain, there are two main neurotransmitters, uh, 
one GABA, which is inhibitory and reduces electrical activity, and the other glutamate, which is excitatory and increases electrical activity. And what we are finding is that GABA is particularly decreased uh, in, uh, in these uh, mice, and uh, that uh, the number of cells uh, uh, that have GABA is decreased, not just the function, but also the number. And uh, we, we are now uh, starting studies to understand, one, uh, how we can correct for that by, if, uh, by screening medications that hopefully may be able to correct for that, and two, to try to find out why this decrease in the number of cells is there in order to hopefully try to prevent it. Uh, so uh, the, the study of the uh, mouse model is uh, 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 opening for us many avenues for hope, for uh, discovery, uh, to understand what's going on and hopefully to treat it. Part of what we are uh, looking at uh, through the International AHC Research Consortium with uh, Dr. Arzimanoglu and uh, Rosaria Vavasori is uh, potentially starting new uh, therapies and one of the proposals that we got uh, that uh, uh, we uh, will be discussing uh, just in a uh, uh, next tomorrow actually uh, is uh, the possibility of starting a, a, a cannabidiol CBD which is uh, uh, an extract of uh, hemp uh, the, for the treatment of uh, uh, alternating hemiplegia uh, of childhood and uh, it turns out that uh, uh, CBD has been uh, 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 given uh, um, orphan status uh, uh, in Europe uh, or in, in many countries in Europe uh, for the treatment of uh, uh, certain types of epilepsy. Uh, CBD is uh, protective for the brain against toxicity induced uh, by Wabain. Uh, Wabain is a medication which inhibits ATP1A3. So you could inhibit ATP1A3 by having a mutation in it, and that's what causes alternating hemiplegia of childhood, and you could inhibit uh, uh, ATP1A3 by giving Wabain. And if you give Wabain uh, to experimental animals, these are studies done many years ago, that hurts the neurons. And it turns out that CBD the, uh, can prevent that toxicity. So, so uh, it makes sense to think that maybe CBD can prevent the toxicity of the gene mutation that can uh, cause AHC. We don't know that for a fact, but uh, uh, to try CBD in patients with AHC is something to consider. Uh, of course, one has to do that thoughtfully after a lot of uh, 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 thought and planning and research uh, to make sure that uh, this, this is uh, uh, appropriate and that if it is done, it's done the right way. We really need to uh, study any new agent, whether it's CBD or anything else, very carefully and thoughtfully uh, because uh, there will be a lot of ideas that can come along and uh, I think uh, it is important to uh, target which ones to be studied and how to study them. And uh, that's what we hope to uh, uh, do in, in the uh, research consortium, to try and work with uh, investigators uh, w uh, within that consortium or even outside, and also with uh, family groups and uh, industry to try and uh, facilitate and at the same time help uh, in the process of uh, 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 pushing uh, uh, the, the discoveries in the right way at the right pace. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I think this uh, uh, CBD is uh, 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 certainly a, a very uh, 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 attractive candidate, uh, uh, but we need to have the process uh, take uh, 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 its course. Uh, and. Uh, um, uh, also, there are uh, other uh, research uh, uh, projects. Uh, the, the research consortium, uh, which was formed, actually, it was, it's one of the major advances in the uh, area of AHC research that it was formed, uh, and it is now international. Uh, and the, uh, one of its first activities was the cardiac study 
that uh, Dr. Sisodia uh, uh, in University College of London uh, spearheaded and his group. Uh, and uh, basically it showed that patients with AHC have cardiac rhythm abnormalities uh, that were not previously recognized, at least not to that, to that extent. And this is a major advance in our understanding of what the ATP1A3 uh, mutations uh, uh, may do or the, uh, uh, or the disease may do, and uh, hopefully will help us understand the mechanisms of uh, the sudden unexpected death that sometimes uh, happens in a minority of uh, uh, patients with AHC. And, uh, 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 parallel to that, we are now studying at Duke, we, we uh, are par uh, uh, joint forces with the, a, a cardiac uh, uh, researcher uh, uh, who is also a specialist in cardiac rhythm abnormalities in the lab, that we, and we're studying the rhythm problems in the uh, mice that we have. So hopefully some uh, insights may be gained from, from that too. So, so this is another area that uh, 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 clinical studies and basic science studies are, are uh, uh, going hand in hand. Uh, the other uh, major advance in, in the past few months uh, came was in better understanding of the uh, sodium potassium pump dysfunction that occurs with ATP1A3. Uh, the, the work uh, uh, from Austa Australia by Dr. Petru uh, showed that the, depending on what mutation you may have, you can have different abnormalities in the uh, uh, function of that uh, uh, pump. For example, uh, the D801N mutation and 947 mutation uh, affect the exchange of sodium and potassium only whereas the mutations, uh, mutations that are E815K affect the exchange of sodium and potassium and also the proton uh, uh, transport uh, that can occur also uh, through the AT, uh, ATP1A3. Uh, so uh, it seems that uh, the E815K that has uh, more severe phenotype has additional abnormalities uh, that result from the mutation. So that's an, an insight. Uh, also very exciting is the, uh, are the uh, studies coming from uh, Denmark uh, uh, that uh, have shown that uh, you can correct this uh, abnormality in sodium potassium uh, exchange uh, uh, if you add another mutation. So uh, there are gain of function mutations. The usually, the uh, uh, or all the AHC mutations are loss of function. There is less function, but as far as we know, but uh, they found that the, you, they can induce a gain of function mutation in another part of the mu uh, of the ATP1A3 uh, gene that can compensate for the, the loss of function mutation. Uh, that causes AHC. So this was, of course, in, in, in the lab, in, uh, in cells, uh, but uh, that also opens uh, another uh, uh, avenue for uh, hope for uh, possible therapies that may be developed. Uh, and for, the, for example, gene therapy. And uh, uh, at Duke, we, we have already partnered with uh, um, the uh, genetics group to uh, do gene therapy uh, uh, in our uh, mice uh, uh, by putting the uh, actual uh, healthy gene into the, uh, um, uh, the, the mice and see if we can correct the uh, abnormality. And then we will uh, try to look at maybe uh, putting the gene in specific target areas uh, uh, eventually to see if certain target areas are more likely to to respond instead of kind of having it in, in all the brain. And potentially we could at some stage think about uh, uh, using some of this uh, 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 gain of function mutations to try and correct that. So the, uh, the, uh, the uh, opportunities are increasing and uh, uh, the uh, discoveries in the ATP1A3 and AHC uh, field are accelerating. Regarding the, the clinic, uh, uh, it is not easy to keep up a clinic. Uh, uh, 
and to coordinate all the activities that have to be uh, coordinated for, for the patients. And we, we've really used initially uh, two things. One, the Duke funds uh, that, that, that we had. We put a lot of discretionary funds and professorship funds into, in, in, into that. And also the logistical uh, uh, superb support from QRHC, because without which we wouldn't be able to do what we were doing. Uh, uh, and from facilitating patients to to uh, to come to to helping us uh, communicate with them to arranging everything to uh, all kinds of support uh, and now we uh, we have the financial support for a coordinator for that clinic uh, uh, I, I think uh, more financial support for uh, 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 enlarging the clinic would come uh, uh, come uh, very uh, 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 appreciated and uh, would really be very helpful uh, because uh, now we we have like w one patient uh, per month uh, the the whole evaluation takes uh, a week with, because they have to do so many uh, evaluations to generate the comprehensive uh, evaluation and uh, 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 it, to, to just to coordinate the work, uh, the, uh, the, all that work takes a lot of effort and uh, uh, if we have more uh, support then we would be able to uh, uh, see more patients. Uh, we have a long waiting uh, list uh, uh, but I think if we start to see one patient a week instead of one patient a month, uh, we, we, we certainly uh, can uh, uh, accommodate uh, um, many more given our capability, but it's uh, the, the, uh, the logistics. Now, when I say one patient a month, these are the new patients with the comprehensive evaluations. Uh, there are uh, a lot of patients that come for follow-up, and there are a lot of patients that come f like for a clinic visit. Like uh, I end up seeing them without necessarily the comprehensive evaluation. So those we can accommodate much more easily and much more frequently. Of, uh, of course, but we feel that uh, every patient deserves a comprehensive evaluation and a de designed plan for all aspects of their care and not just uh, one, uh, because then uh, they, when they go back to, to, to their physicians, then we can support them much more uh, as, as things uh, develop. And then they come back for follow-up depending on where they're from at periodic times uh, or sometimes it's a one-time thing and uh, the communication is always with the physician and with them uh, uh, after that. I, I think uh, uh, performing a natural history study is critical for this disease and that will help bring the patients for these comprehensive evaluations with additional testing that is geared not just for clinical but also for research and to do that periodically uh, for uh, these patients in order to understand the natural history of the disease because any study that uh, is an interventional therapeutic study uh, will need a very good uh, preliminary uh, uh, understanding of the natural history. If you don't exactly understand the natural history and how to predict what they are uh, going to undergo, one will not be able to plan a therapeutic study. And there are two ways where it can help. One, uh, uh, sometimes there are therapies that you introduce and you, all you compare the patients to that received the, the study uh, medication or treatment is the historical controls. So if you have good historical controls, then you can understand the uh, uh, effect of the therapy. That's one. The second way is to do a controlled study where some patients get the therapy and some don't. But in order to plan such a controlled study well, you need to have understood the natural history very well. So either way, whether it's a controlled study or whether it is a study with historical controls, a natural history study would be critical. So for the natural history study, the funds would be used for uh, the research-based studies the, that would be done on top of the um, medical care uh, uh, evaluations. 
and uh, um, uh, uh, there are many of those. Uh, for example, MRI techniques are, are very important, and they can uh, help us understand the development of the brain and the function of the brain. Also, uh, to, just to help patients to come and be evaluated repeatedly, because not all of them can afford it. So uh, the, the, these funds would be very important to help patients come, and this way you can develop longitudinal uh, uh, the collection of data that helps you understand how their uh, uh, spells are uh, uh, developing, how their dev uh, motor development, how co their cognitive development, how their tests are developing, and maybe just as importantly, how maybe you will be able to predict from their initial evaluations and their genetics initially, maybe you can predict how they are going to develop later. And once you understand the natural history uh, of uh, uh, these uh, uh, patients with the different mutations, with the different manifestations, then you are much more able to plan the therapeutic trials, whether they are, as, as we mentioned before, whether they are uh, uh, trials that use historical controls, because th there are certain therapies that uh, uh, you will not be able to uh, do blinded uh, control studies, or whether you are doing uh, and planning control studies where some patients get the treatment and some other patients uh, don't get the treatment. Because to plan these studies, the control studies, you do need to understand the natural history. What we have been trying to do, I mean, uh, if, if they can get to, to Duke, we uh, are ready to see them pro bono without, without any charge to them, at least uh, in uh, some of the visits, uh, because some other visits we don't have control over and we, we cannot. But uh, uh, I personally, for example, would be happy to do that. I've, as I've been traveled like in different uh, parts of the country, uh, if, uh, I've seen patients that could not travel to, to Duke, that uh, they would come to the hotel, or I see them in, in a, in a uh, uh, medical center and kind of give them uh, uh, my opinion and uh, help, uh, work with, with their physician to try and uh, uh, contribute to their uh, care, put our minds together to, to try and see what more we can help them. Uh, but. Uh, 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 for uh, uh, performing uh, studies uh, uh, to collect data to understand the disease better, you really need to uh, do uh, evaluations uh, that uh, uh, either have to be paid for by insurance or you, uh, by research funds. And uh, uh, it uh, becomes more difficult when, when uh, you have uh, uh, somebody who uh, is not able to travel to you, uh, you cannot use uh, funds uh, uh, that uh, uh, are for other things to, to help them travel, for example. But uh, 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 in general, uh, if we cannot help by having them come and we ev evaluate them uh, at Duke, we work very closely with uh, their physicians, uh, and we, we talk with them on the phone. Uh, like, uh, not uh, infrequently, I have people calling from different parts of the world, from Alaska in, in the US, I mean, the uh, far places, California, uh, that uh, is not very easy for them to travel all the way. And, uh, but we talk with them, and we talk with their physicians. We're always careful not to overstep the uh, authority of the physician because the treating physician has the final authority, but we educate them about the disease, the, we educate the family about the disease and, and about our experience, and we work with their doctor to uh, and talk with them, we communicate by email to, to kind of uh, uh, pitch in into the thought process and uh, uh, put uh, our minds together uh, to, to, to come up with the, the best uh, 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 a plan that we can come up with.